So, once again, Regina Rao. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you, beautiful, for coming here. Thank you so much for having me. And you drove all the way down from Phoenix. See, we got to go do a show in Phoenix. Everybody wants to be on our show, and we truly appreciate you coming down here. Thank you. Very thankful to be here. So just let everybody know who don't know who you are. Well, as you heard of Ambassador Regina Brown, I do many things throughout the community. Most recently, since we have a short period of time, I am a um, facilitator and a trainer for Celebrate Recovery, which is a recovery program. It is a faith-based recovery program that is a dynamic program. I just came back from California where over 3,000 people were gathered together telling the testimonies, how they've been um, saved from suicide, from drug addiction, from alcohol abuse, from childhood abuse, from sexual addiction, from shopping addiction, and so on. I mean, from codependency, and just getting their lives on track to live the life that they were to live, that they were born to live. So I love doing that. Um, tonight I'm gonna to talk a little bit about the special program to my heart because of a, uh, my nephew who passed away. Um, well, he was killed 20 years ago. It's taken a long time because of the family things and all. But um, I'm doing something to honor him. And then I'm also a life coach. So everything that I do, I just love to help people. So we're not the only one to have 80 jobs, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, I want to mention how uh, Regina is giving away a uh, free life coaching session tonight. So some lucky person is going to win that. That's right. And everybody needs coaching. You know, you have great basketball teams, football teams, and I, in my younger days, was on a volleyball team. And the one thing I realized is I could have, I had the talent. I didn't know how to play well with others until I had a coach. And that the coach is the one that helped us pull the team together and win the games. So life coaching is very popular now, but it's really something that we've always needed. And it just transitioned names. Some people call it mentoring and so on. But uh, I'm very excited to be a life coach because there's a lot of people have great talent, but they just need a little bit of help on how to play the game, how to be a good team member and be successful. Congratulations to you. And we, well, we definitely uh, want to hear about this project that you're so passionate about. Uh, this project is a 20-year project. It's a book, it's in comic book form, called Gang Related. And briefly, it was because my nephew was killed 20 years ago, and it wasn't until the funeral that I realized and found out that he was actually a part of a gang. And some people think of gang members, they think, oh, the family knows, and they don't care, or this or that. And I was really oblivious, and so were some of the other members of my family, had no idea. Um, I found out through conversation and talking that he was um, recruited to a gang between the ages of 10 and 11 years old. I also found out that he looked at them as being family, and that really shocked my heart because I'm like, we were family. We were there loving, caring for him and stuff. When my sister couldn't, my mom took over. That was his grandmother. But anyway, um, it was on my heart to do something to turn a tragedy into a triumphant thing. And so finally, 20 years later, through a lot of pain and a lot of issues, but I also did some um, interviews because I didn't know much about gang activity. So I interviewed police, I interviewed the gang units, I, I interviewed gang members, ex-gang members, I interviewed um, people in the, in the jails, I'm a chaplain at the jail, and put together a story, one character but a full story, that just kind of gives a little bit of history about what can happen with a life when it's turned in the wrong direction, um, where they feel they need outside, you know, family. And then it has three pages in the back that gives uh, what parents should know. And basically I call it my conversation starter. It's something that if you have it with your kids and there's tough topics to talk about, uh, that it can start a conversation. And prayerfully, for me, I, I, I've been in prayer, but prayerfully, it will help save the life of someone where nobody else is going to a funeral and they're saying, well, I had no idea. I didn't know that this was going on and it could have been stopped with a conversation. Well, I know prayer works because I'm one of them living suspects that could be in that book, so I truly thank you. But like you said, it's a problem because a lot of parents don't know the signs to see and know that their kids are involved in something like that. So, you know, you took it to a uh, cartoon form, mm -hmm. and it really is a nice read, and you know me, I like pictures, so. The illustrators did an awesome oh, job. It God, took me several fantastic. years to find them, and that worked out. And the, uh, the element, many of the people that I spoke with, I would say 99% of them stated that their faith 
in a higher power. Their faith in God um, is what really got them through. So I'm not, I am um, uncompromisingly a believer, but not to push on anybody else, but I also noticed that the ones I, I interviewed and talked to, they themselves said that if it wasn't for a higher power or their God, that they wouldn't have been able to make it and make the transition from what, what they were in to something uh, different. And it's not just being a gang member. I could have called it drug related. I could have called it alcohol related. I could have called it codependent related. Um, but it's just taking the, um, the hurts and the habits, the hangups of our life, and making it something different, making it better. And you'll be doing some work in Phoenix, who we hope to be partnering up with you as well there, uh, with the churches there, yes. and talking to the youth there as well. And she does do, you know, uh, meetings here in Tucson, so if you guys have some youth that you want, uh, or groups, to I have her to, speak, right? I talk to groups. I love doing parents and youth together, but I've been both. I do community groups. They're not all churches, but I go to churches. I go to nonprofit organizations. I've done the four community groups here leaders, people, anybody that deals with teens. And it has been phenomenal what I, from the youth, that have come back and said, a matter of fact, one gentleman heard me twice, and before I could even get in and, and, and stand before them, he said, get her book, you need that book. So my goal has been to do 20 speaking engagements throughout the city um, in, by December. And I bring the books and just ask for donations for the books. And then all of the money that's raised is going for the um, scholarships, youth educational scholarships. So my goal is to do eight $500 scholarships by December, and I've already raised enough for two scholarships, and I've done 12 meetings, so I have room for at least eight more. Oh, more, more, more. So if anybody wants to help out, how do they get in contact with you? They can go to GoFundMe.com slash um, gang related. They can also look up Ambassador Regina Brown on Facebook, and I'm there. They can message me um, or email me at ambassadorbrown at juno, J-U-N-O, dot com. Well, you are truly a blessing, and you had one heck of a story. We thank definitely you. got to record all of that, because you are an inspiration. So we truly thank you for coming all the way down here to be on the Duke and Cat Show. Thank so, you again so much. I have a bet. special autographed copy by the illustrators and myself for Duke and Cat. Well, thank you so much. Everybody give it up for Ms. Ambassador Regina Brown.